it going everyone and welcome to Formar Ranch. Now today I'm excited to be talking to you about the AccuFire Prospectus Atro 20. Now that's kind of a mouthful so I'm going to refer to it as the Atro 20. I believe the AccuFire team does as well but this is part of their Prospectus optic line so that's where the Prospectus comes from. But bottom line up front what is the Atro 20? Well it's a first focal plane 2.5 to 20 power optic with a 50 millimeter front objective lens and housed on a 34 millimeter scope. So if you know anything about optics, that's quite incredible that it can go from two and a half all the way to 20 power. There's several other features that I wanna unpack as part of this video, give you my thoughts on the clarity of this optic compared to other ones in this price range, as well as my overall thoughts and opinions and reliability with this optic thus far. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. If there's anything that you want to skip ahead to as part of this video, check the description below. There's going to be different timestamps, as well as a link to the AccuFire website where if you use discount code 4MAR, you will receive 5% off your order. So full disclaimer, I want to address my relationship with AccuFire. And that is that they approached me, asked if I'd be willing to do a review of this optic. And full disclosure, if you do purchase this using my discount code, it will give the channel a little bit of a kickback while also saving you some money. Now, I do want to address that I would absolutely not advocate anyone to purchase anything that I would not for myself. So kind of spoil alert, I absolutely love this optic, but I'm going to go ahead and explain to you why that is with some actual evidence and examples in this video. So let's go ahead and dive into the AccuFire Atro 20 rifle scope. three 500 yards with the atro 20. so just diving into the specs itself like i said it is on a 34 millimeter tube so you're going to get a lot of light transmission this scope is going to do very very well in low light compared to a 30 millimeter scope and especially compared to a standard one inch scope i'm not sure that those are still popular these days but 34 millimeter is kind of picking up in popularity that being said you are not going to be able to find a decent 34 millimeter uh, scope mount right off the shelf as easy as you would a 30 millimeter or one inch so i did pick this one up myself online it is an american defense mount and uh, it's been very very reliable um, went with the flat dark earth if for those that follow the channel this optic is pretty much resided on my ar10 platform and it's been absolutely perfect because again talking about specs two and a half to 20 power. So with a semi-automatic platform, if I need to dial back out to two and a half power and have a little bit of uh, reflexiveness with this optic, it'll definitely do it. Now, obviously an AR-10 is not the perfect run and gun platform, but when getting a feel for this optic, I did do a little bit of run and gun shooting with it while at the range with some buddies. Stand by. And at two and a half power, it was very fast and reflexive, and it was really easy to acquire my target, even with a large bulky platform. So on the flip side, I did plenty of plinking at long range, uh, 500 yard steel targets, and uh, at 20 power, more than enough magnification. In fact, I found myself kind of backing out to about 15 power because the reticle that is on this optic is very, very good when you're shooting far away it does have 20 mils of elevation marked there on the reticle so it comes in incredibly useful for holdovers both in the windage and elevation direction when i was shooting at long range if i did see some dirt kick up it was very very simple to just use the reticle to make that holdover and then if you want to go ahead and change your zero based on how many mils you are either over windage and under or over in elevation it's very very easy and quick to then do so Yeah. Damn. But you should be right on, no? Uh, I mean, different ammo. I should be close. You got eyes on on your end? All right. A little right. right. But let's see how this Winchester ammo likes to be all over the place. So you see I'm holding the same. All right, so still a little right. So I'm gonna go 
left about one. Boom. The reticle is illuminated with 11 different brightness settings and a 12th for being off. So it does not have the off in between different brightness settings. For me, it's not really that big of a deal because I'm either going to be using it at full blast on 11 during the day or at night I might be on one or two at the brightest. Now, the cool thing about it being illuminated is that that makes this a very good candidate to pair with clip on night vision or thermal optics. Um, I actually use the AccuFire and Sendus with this. It's kind of a match made in heaven. Been very successful every time I've taken it on a hunt. I've taken a couple hogs. And because it's illuminated, I can see those crosshairs very, very pronounced over the thermal image when putting it in front as a clip-on thermal optic. Now the optic itself weighs an advertised 820 grams without the mount, which translates to about 1.8 pounds. So it's definitely not the lightest optic, however, every ounce I feel is value added on this and when you are talking about a 34 millimeter tube size obviously it's going to be larger there's more internals and it's going to weigh a little bit more but what are the benefits to the 34 millimeter tube well the biggest perk to this especially for you guys that want to get into more long range shooting is the amount of adjustment you have within these turrets so this is a mill scope they do not currently offer this optic in MOA or minute of angle. So if you think in MOA like I do, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. Um, nonetheless, you have a crazy amount of adjustment. In both the elevation and windage direction, you get 38.5 mils of adjustment. And for those MOA guys, that translates to 132 MOA of adjustment. That is absolutely insane. The optic that I was using previously to this was the Vortex Viper Gen 2, which only had 70 MOA of adjustment in the elevation and 35 in the windage. So you're talking almost double the adjustment in both directions on this optic. So you get a lot of adjustment when you're talking about a 34 millimeter tube. The turrets can go so much further. Now on the subject of the turrets inside of this optic, uh, AccuFire calls them their ZRT locking turrets and honestly it's probably the first thing I noticed about this optic and it's definitely my favorite thing about this optic. It has the absolute best turrets of any optic I've used to date. I absolutely love it. There's nothing that I would improve on them. They really really thought it out so I want to kind of explain why. But real quick let's just do a quick Atro 20 turret click appreciation because these are some of the most tactile turrets I've ever heard. You really feel every little adjustment. You don't question it whatsoever. So I just got to share this with you guys. And so now for reference, here's the Vortex Viper Gen 2. Um, I don't want to make this a comparison video, but this is another kind of good baseline. It's a well-known optic uh, in terms of what you may be familiar with. And again, this optic ended up replacing this on my personal rifle. Now, Here's uh, an example of why, in terms of just the turret clicks alone, versus So honestly, not much of a comparison. Every adjustment you make on this, you're not gonna question it whatsoever. Like I said, it's incredibly tactile. It's fairly pronounced when you're at the range, even a noisy one, um, you definitely know when you're adjusting it. So since the turret system is the heart and soul of this optic, I wanted to show you them in a little bit more detail, nice and up close. So first thing you'll notice is the beautiful texturing. They're nice and beveled and they're kind of notched where they're really easy to index to adjust them. Now when they're down like this, they are locked in place so you can't twist. All you do is you pull upwards and then they're unlocked and you can easily rotate them. With those nice tactile clicks. Same thing is true for the windage. You just pull up and it can adjust. Now let's say we got our zero set, we twisted it and it's on you know index number four. You'll notice that the hardware is nice flathead screws, which is appreciated. 
It's not some Allen key that's easy to strip. And on top of that, you're out in the field, you don't have a tool with you, you can use a shell casing. So just using a flathead spec, the screw out, and then you can lift the turret straight off. So now let's say we just set our zero. The next useful feature is gonna be their zero stop device which you notice has a little notch. There's a corresponding notch on the underside of the elevation turret. You'll simply just thread it on as is, nothing fancy, very simple, which can be the best approach in my opinion. And what that's gonna do is mechanically stop your turret from backing any lower on the elevation. So if you make your adjustments for 650 yards and you've done a few turns, um, once you go back to zero, so whatever range you decide to set your zero, mine is a set for 100 yards, then after going to 650 yards, you turn it back and it'll mechanically stop at zero. Now, um, to put this in place, again, in the scenario where we're just zeroing for the first time with this zero stop, um, you obviously wanna line up your zero with a line that's on the very bottom here. And on top of that, a really nice feature, they have a raised surface at the zero and on the 180 degree opposite side on the five. So, you know, if you're in low light or hunting, you can once again reference those points. So they really did think of everything on these turrets. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide the zero in place. So we just line that zero up and then tighten that screw down. And there you go. We've now set the zero on this turret. So to make any adjustments, again, all you'll do is simply lift up and rotate, but see, notice I can't rotate left anymore. So I can go for a further distance and then twist all the way back and it mechanically stops me at zero. Now the same index is true for the windage. However, there's not a zero stop here. So you could accidentally do more than one revolution, possibly lose your place when trying to return to zero. But keep in mind guys that you really don't need that much range on elevation um, you use it way more so on elevation windage. I'd be very surprised if you had to do more than a full turn. So just be cognizant of that and be aware of where you're making adjustments on your windage. On your left hand side, you have this kind of dual turret, which is your parallax, which goes from 50 yards all the way to infinity. And you, this outer turret is your brightness, which goes from 11 different brightness settings, one through 11, and then zero for a 12th setting being off. Now there is not you'll notice an offsetting in between the brightness. So if you want to shut it off in between, I'm sorry, minor inconvenience. Okay, so let's talk about clarity. And again, just as another baseline, I'm gonna reference the Vortex um, Generation 2 because this is roughly in the same price point as of making this video. So on AccuFire's website, they list this one for just under $1,200. I think the Vortex Vipers MSRP on Vortex's website is actually closer to $1,300. However, street price, you can find it anywhere from $1,200 sometimes nowadays since it's been out for a while, closer to $1,000. But upon the initial release, exact same street price. So that being said, uh, Vortex is known for a lot of clarity for the price. Um, the AccuFire holds up. Uh, in fact, uh, it if you didn't have them side by side, I don't know that you would be able to distinguish a difference between the clarity. Now, on that note, when I initially started using this Vortex scope, um, I looked through a friend of mine's scope made by Tracked Optics. Why am I bringing this up? Well, uh, Tracked Optics uses what's uh, known as shot glass, which is some of the highest optical quality glass that is used in even really, really high end, talking thousands of dollar optics, right? So uh, the Vortex, to my eye actually held up to that shot glass, which is what made me very, very happy with this optic at the price point. So it makes me equally happy seeing the AccuFire uh, Atro 20 holding up to the Vortex, therefore also holding up to the shot glass um, that is used in much higher end and more expensive optics. So optically, this optic is phenomenal. I would say it has very good contrast. There is very little uh, what's known as chromatic aberration, which is if you see something bright on the end uh, or on the edges of a bright object, do you get kind of that rainbow or fringing look? Uh, this is pretty minimal. Uh, depends on lighting conditions. Sometimes you'll see a little bit, but nothing out of the ordinary. It's not, uh, you know, if you told somebody that this is a $3,000 optic and they look through it, I believe they would absolutely believe you. The optical quality, especially at the price point for just over $1,000 um, is, phenomenal. It absolutely impressed me in that sense. 
So the scope is built well. The turrets are some of the best I've seen. Uh, it overall feels and looks like a high quality optic has phenomenal clarity, but now what good is all that if it's not reliable, right? So let's talk about my experience in reliability. Well, this optic has sat on top of a semi-automatic 308 platform for the duration of my testing. Several hundred rounds have been put through it with it on that optic. It's been zeroed primarily and hasn't really been re-zeroed. There was a minor tweak that was made because I switched ammo types, but there was no loss of zero whatsoever um, when using this optic. Uh, again, I have been using a high quality mount to really make sure that if something were to be off, it'd be the optic itself. So it's on an American Defense quick detach mount, very proven mount. So nothing has been discovered whatsoever in terms of losing zero. Now this turret system allows you to make those quick changes on the fly, but that's really only useful if it goes back exactly where the optic is intended to be. So mechanically inside, if I do one rotation of the turret and because I'm doing long range shooting and I turn it back to zero, is it gonna keep my zero or is there gonna be a slight variation of that zero? So to take a look at that, I did a few tracking tests. One of them I did record for you guys and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and roll that footage here real quick. Tracking wise, it performed as it should, and I'm very confident that when I make adjustments, it goes back where I need it. Now, in terms of warranty, should you break something on this optic, uh, they pretty much cover everything 100% based on the warranty cards that they include in every optic that you purchase through AccuFire. They just ask as part of that warranty card, you let them know what happens so they can potentially improve their design in the future if it's applicable to a design flaw. So other than that, they got you covered. So really the only issue i guess you can call it with reliability is uh with the kind of cheaper covers that came with it you can see this one just kind of popped off it was during a uh, hunt that i was on at night i used to leave these on and would just leave them kind of popped up like so on top of the optic well um, as i was getting out of the truck again it was complete darkness i snagged the top the little spring mechanism went somewhere no idea it's probably lost in a field somewhere and uh, the scope cover kind of just fell apart so I would say if you are wanting to keep the objective and rear objective lens um, covered, probably invest in a little bit higher quality um, covers, but it'll definitely get you by if you're more careful than I am, at least initially. But I'm pretty rough on my toys, and unfortunately the only thing to not hold up so far is the uh, front scope cover or front objective lens cover. Other than that, no issues whatsoever and uh, the finish is actually holding up pretty well considering I've been throwing it in the back of my truck uh, and taking it in and out for hunting and just kind of letting it bounce around. Now there's really only one thing that might be kind of a flaw in terms of this optic and that's when at distances under 50 yards, so again this parallax is only adjustable from 50 to infinity, there's nothing closer. Now anything within 50 yards you definitely want to be at that base two and a half magnification. You can maybe go up to four or five but if you're a varmint hunter and sometimes you're only 20 yards away from a squirrel or from rats and you want to try to use the 20 power, it's not going to be nicely focused with that reticle and what you're aiming at. That's really the only thing I've noticed. So within that 50 yard range, you really got to kind of lay off the magnification, which on one hand kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, if you're shooting up close, you don't necessarily want to be zoomed in from a tactical application. But again, if you're a varmint hunter uh, or shooting at small game that you can get within 50 yards of and you want to be as precise as possible, that's kind of the shortfall area of the Atro 20, at least uh, in my testing. But that's about the only thing I can really complain with on this optic. Like I said, I've had zero issues with losing zero. Um, as shown, the tracking works as it should. So if you're a competitive shooter or a long range shooting enthusiast, um, rest assured these tactical turrets are gonna do what you want them to do without fear of losing your zero. And it's really, really hard, if not impossible to get confused, especially with their zero stop. Should this magically pop up in your bag and make several rotations um, like magic and you know exactly how to get it back where it needs to go, again, without fear of losing zero. Whereas other systems that I've personally used um, 
it's not the case. They can pop up, they can rotate, set back down, and then you're not sure if it if it made clicks or if it just reset altogether. So nicely implemented turret system, reliable system, and optically phenomenal system all the way around. So hopefully that sheds some insight on the AccuFire Atro 20 line of rifle scopes. If there's anything I may have missed, throw it in the comments below. I try to be responsive in all these comments. If at this point you are interested in potentially picking one of these up for yourself, I will have a website below where you can go on and hit up the AccuFire online store. And if you want to save some money while also helping to support the 4 Ranch YouTube channel, you can use discount code 4 So again, I would not advocate anything I wouldn't buy myself. And like I said, this has officially replaced my previous optic. Um, I like it that much. This is going to be my go-to now on my AR-10 platforms. So I completely stand behind the Atro 20 for my own personal use. Other than that, I'd really like to thank you for taking the time to stop by for my ranch. And as always guys, have a good one. Oh my God, I don't have freaking- Silenced.